Hey guys, what's up? This is Rich with Burn Social, and I'm really excited to share with you my review of the Priority CR6. I uh, just came in the mail today. I'm really excited for a couple of the features like the auto leveling, you know, the touch screen. I think it'll be fun to play around with. Um, I'm just happy to share my opinions on it, kind of, you know, let you know what I think. So let's get this opened up. Uh, we also have the Employee of the Month, Rosie, joining us today. Um, she was also just, I think, excited as we all are um, for the CR6, so she's going to help us do our unboxing. Isn't that right, Rosie? I got a cut, so let's see what's inside. Awesome, looking clean. So we have the user manual. You know, I have the instructions uh, for use, you know, put it together, but obviously we're already experts here, right? Everybody watching. Um, can't really read that, but some cautions. <laughs> and then we got, oh, even embedded in. What is this? Oh, no way, they gave us a whole roll of filament, actually. For tests, usually you know you get the test little dinky, you know, maybe like quarter of a kilogram. So that's pretty nice. Uh, some white PLA. I'm actually really happy about that. Uh, so I'm also excited to see how it performs. I've never actually used their brand of filament. Nice, new, you know, metal hot end enclosure. I think that's gonna be a lot nicer. Uh, All right. So we, looks like we've got a top layer here. Let's pull that out. And just like the other um, Ender models, CR, you know, CR series as well. Um, we have the bed already assembled in here, which is really nice compared to something like in a net, right? Where you actually have to assemble from scratch. I can get a little uh, dicey. All right, so we got everything unpacked now, and there's actually not that many pieces. Um, some really cool things to point out would be that first they included a lot of extra parts. So we have you know 10 extra .4 nozzles, which is really nice. Um, extra Bowden tube, so it definitely comes in handy because I usually have to get like a lot of extra stock with those. Um, we got our power cord, but then we have the touch screen, which is cool. I'm um, very excited to plug that in and play with it. So they also included a 0.3 millimeter nozzle, which I think is really cool to kind of change it up, get a little more detail on your prints. Um, some extra parts for the extruder mechanism, which is really cool. You know, the extruder spring, ball bearing, stuff like that, which is kind of unique because this is an issue I've run into in the past. I think it's really cool that they're thinking ahead on this stuff. And then we also have an extra Y-axis motor, which is kind of uncommon, but typically the first one to go just because of the weight that you have on the Y-axis. So I think it's really cool at thinking ahead on that as well. But what's really cool about this is it all comes assembled. We have the extruder casing already done uh, with a lot of room for airflow. It looks like something that's not too easy to really take apart um, and play around with, but hopefully the way this is built, you shouldn't really have to, right? That was kind of a, a give and take with older models. I'm gonna flip it around here. So you can see the whole um, extruder casing. Again, something that you're not really supposed to open, but has a different locking mechanism here. Similar to actually how the bed functions, where it's kind of a you know, push, clicks into place. Um, should refer, provide a lot better grip, um, allow for a lot less slippage. We also have dual Z motors here, um, as you can see, which is a really cool upgrade to your previous models and should allow for a lot less wobble in your prints. Really cool feature here, we have a built-in filament runout sensor. So basically what you do, if you haven't used one before, is you feed your filament through, feed it through the extruder, so you pop it out, click it in once the filament's in, and then if you actually end up running out of filament, you don't have to be next to your printer if you know it's a kind of risky print. Once it gets through here, the printer will automatically pause and allow you to put in new filament, which I think is awesome. It like, saves a lot of prints and also saves you a lot of material in the end from wasted parts. So one really cool feature I did not discover immediately is that we have, so we have our control board here with slots for you know, SD card, a micro USB. We have our power supply in the back. I actually thought this up here was part of the power supply but it's not, it's actually got a nice, cool little uh, drawer for tools. So you open it up, has a lot of cool utilities, has our bed scraper, unique to the other ones they had. Um, got some stickers, pretty cool. Love some stickers in my enclosures. Um, you know, got needle for clearing the hot end um, once you heat it up. Got wrench set, we got Allen keys, and clippers I like those <laughs> so these are uh, creative clippers are actually some of my favorite just because they're so sharp you can't get ones that sharp um up in the us um these are a little bit shorter looks like they're already greased up which is pretty cool and have a little safety lock and then most importantly um we have our sd card reader and our sd card so that's cool. This version actually uses a full SD card instead of a micro USD, or a micro SD card as opposed to previous versions. 
So one really important thing before you actually start your printer is to set the voltage or else it won't turn on. You could damage your printer. I'll show you how to do that real quick. It's located right here, right in the back of the printer. So here it is zoomed in. Set to 230 out of the box as it came from China. But we're in North America. I'm assuming you are too if you're watching this. So you're going to need to put you know, something small in there. Maybe it's a pen, a tool. Flip it over to 115. Um, and you should definitely check what the setting is for your region before you actually uh, make the switch and turn it on. Here it is fully assembled. Looks pretty cool. Uh, let's turn it on and see if it works. It does. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. So here's what the home screen looks like. First thing we're going to do, my favorite part of getting any new electronic is peeling off the screen. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Doesn't get better than that. First thing we're going to do is test the auto level function. So basically you just click level. You can click this button in the center to home the Z axis. And then you have the Z offset here, which you're able to adjust very easily. Um, but we're just going to go straight to the auto leveling function. So we'll tap it, wait for the nozzle to heat up, and it should handle it from there. So for this print, we're going to be using the filament they included uh, with the printer, which is white PLA, Creati brand, um, and then the stock settings in Cura. So 200 degrees Celsius, all that, uh, and let's see what comes out. Here's the first finished product. Like this is right off the printer before I've done any cleanup. And I have to say I'm pretty impressed. So here it is again. After it took a couple minutes to just remove some blobs and the strings and stuff like that. It's not perfect yet. But it's not, like I said, for a first print, I'm very, very impressed. Um, I've never used this filament before, but I think it was good quality. And the strings and stuff will go away with just some small adjustments to the slicer settings. I'm uh, more than happy to make a video in the future, just kind of, like I said, detailing uh, those settings and what you could use on your device, depending on your environment, what your prints look like, etc. Now that we got the part out, I just kind of want to give a general overview of my thoughts on the printer, things I observed while I was using it, putting it together, all that. To start, um, getting the filament in through the extruder was a little bit difficult. I haven't opened up the mechanism yet, I don't really plan to because I don't want to mess with anything yet until it starts giving me problems. Um, but I think it's just a little bit of trial and error with, with what direction you clip it in. I always will bend my filament up. It comes out of the roll a little coiled. So I'll bend the filament up just slightly so that it actually can go in and have like a straight path through rather than curving down hitting something. So, and one other thing is that when we're doing test prints, um, the second print of every cycle, the Z-stop wouldn't work correctly and it would actually be up too high um, during leveling. But then just resetting the printer would fix that um, every time without an issue, so I'm kind of confused about what that is. That's really all I have for you know negative aspects. Uh, everything else was great about this whole experience. I love you know everything from the dual Z axis. It's I, I can't get over how silent this printer is. It literally does not make a single sound. Um, I put like a silent motherboard on an Ender three, and it's you know comparable to that and right out of the box. So good job, Creality, on that. Bed and nozzle control temperature is extremely precise sometimes with some models you get a little bit of fluctuation in the temperature you know it's very precise you can tell they use good equipment for it um, now i'm really impressed with just the attention to detail they put into this it's the drawer for the tools it's the you know the ball metal handle it's, it's small things like that that really make a difference to me they even have a belt in between the z-axis that ensure that they rotate together because i know i've seen that as a problem on other things as well i have a big uh, cr10 s5 that you'll sometimes get the the x-axis to skew because they won't rotate at the same rate and this timing belt actually completely assures that it will. Um, you, you can tell they're really listening to the community on this. Um, they putting the power supply into the actual frame rather than having it stick out. Um, small things like the, you know, the tool holder, um, the ease of access to get the bed actually off. Um, the all the last bed it, I've had, there's actually almost no marks or residue on it because everything peeled up exactly the way it should. The X and Y tensioners, I'm very like happy that they implemented that. I don't know if that was some community feedback or just something they needed they wanted to do, but not something I've seen commonly on any other brand of printer. This is comparable to something like a Prusa or something of that, or a Prusa i7 or something like that, where it's kind of the elite of the hobbyist printers. So like, if you're just getting into 3D printing, um, you haven't really, you don't really know, have a background in it, I would recommend this as the perfect launching point. I think they're gonna retail 
for approximately five six hundred dollars. Um, so if you, if you have the money to spare, this is by far the easiest machine to get because there's no learning involved with it, right? You get it, plug into the computer, click go, and it comes out. Um, where in other ones, you have to learn how to level. There's really no maintenance involved in this compared to the other ones from what I've seen. Uh, I'll hopefully give you an update after a little while of use to see if any problems come up. So overall, I'd give this like a 10 out of 10. It's one of the most user-friendly printers I've actually had the chance to use. You know, assembly was really easy. Um, control scheme really easy to figure out, you know, typical of other printers. Um, and then even just the process, just having to not level my bed is one of my favorite things about this. I've set up ABLs and stuff like that on other uh, printers, but this coming right out of the box, this makes it extremely user friendly and super easy to pick up on device. You haven't actually used a printer before and you're interested in getting into the hobby, this is the printer I recommend you go with because there's no learning curve. You get it, you put it together, you pop in, pop in the card, click a button, and your print comes out. But th thanks for watching. This is our first, you know, real video. We're really excited to be able to share this with you. I'm just happy to share my passion um, about 3D printing with you and just hopefully make it your experience easier and more fun. Yeah, we'll be creating videos, you know, about troubleshooting small things like adjusting. I had to adjust the bed rollers when I first got this or issues with the slicing software, how to get rid of those strings, how to, you know, calibrate everything. It should be really, really cool. And we'll also create an update video, you know, how this ends up doing um, over the next month or so. Don't forget to, you know, subscribe if you want to see updates like this um, and more content like this. Give us a like, show some support, just to really let us know how we're doing. And, you know, I absolutely love reading your comments.